Hey there, miners and crafters. Good times with Scar here. And as you can tell, my friend Cubfan is leading the uh, rankings on the Hermitcraft server in terms of how many of those nether brick bricks he has broken. I guess broken might be appropriate too. But you know what? I'm just kidding. It's Joe Hills. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And that Cub fan has indeed taken advantage of that polar vortex energy. That wind and cold has gotten old, and in his soul, he has been energized. His brain says, you can't go outside, so you must increase these integers wildly by hitting a pickaxe into this red stone that you see, because this project is for the whole community. Now, you know, everybody says, Joe, good times with Scar and Cub Fan. They're doing such a great job for the server. Look at how community-oriented they are. Cub Fan's knocking out all these more blocks than you. 4,000 more blocks than you. But you know what? He's also, you know, one of the richest people on the server. And really, if he wanted to, he could say, Hey, Joe Hills, who has literally one diamond, why don't you mine this out and I'll pay you blocks? And, uh... Unfortunately, I turned all of my diamonds that I had into pickaxes so I could mine this out because I wanted the uh, glory of being in, in uh, you know, a participant in the uh, server-wide effort. But why is the score gone? Anyway, uh, you know, but it's not as glorious to be in third place as it is to be in second place. I could never aspire to break things as quickly or efficiently as false symmetry. You know, she not only sees the truth in things, but she sees where things need to be removed. She says the existence of this brick is an affront to the reality that I would like to shape, and she fills in the gaps with the gapped reality she would like to see. This whole place would be clear if we just left her to it, but of course we all need to carry our burdens, carry our loads. We need to do the best to work in all sorts of different modes of cooperation, whether it's on the G-Team or Team Star, whether it's on Concorp or whatever Python does. I think he hangs out in the UK and then occasionally builds stuff. I, he makes a lot of funny videos. If you aren't following Python, you should probably check him out. He hasn't gotten a lot of love through this whole, uh, you know, Hermitcraft prank war effort because he kind of sat that one out, busy buying houses and Actually, buying houses makes him sound rich. He bought a house, but that's really time-consuming and getting everything together. So anyway, we have plenty more netherrack here that we can begin to cook. I have a plan for a new type of ward system that I think might be rewarding. You know, because it's important to be able to do things that excite and entice your enemies. You don't want them to be bored with your attacks. You want them to be wowed with your attacks. If... If they're bored, they'll be looking for the sword. If they're wowed, you'll be so proud that they didn't expect when you surprise them with something. Um, this is not the best mnemonic device I've ever created, but I am famous for doing all sorts of things that I'm not actually good at, and I'm good at all sorts of things I'm not famous for. So, you know, on the whole, this, you know, kind of breaks even. I've actually been rapidly brainstorming ward variants. Of course, you're familiar with my mausoleum and my Parthenon from the ward system's weaponized architecture rapid deployment stage, or rapidly deployed stage. But I've also developed weaponized astrology rapidly deployed, weaponized artwork rapidly deployed, and uh, what was the other one? Weaponized arachnids rapidly deployed? There was probably another one in there about, oh yeah, weaponized agriculture rapidly deployed. You can see all of those in Full Symmetry's latest video. I built those off camera because, you know, it's not fair to other hermits if I show all the things I build. You know, they need to get those YouTube video view loves as well. So, let's see here. If you want to, yeah, those are, I think, around the nine minute mark of False's latest video, which I don't know the name or the number of, but good luck. Leave a, leave a comment in the YouTube comments section below with what video False Symmetry showed that stuff off in. Of all the things that I have built over there, though, I have I have some wild plans, but I want your feedback, guys, because one thing that makes the ward system so effective so far is it has kept the enemy feeling like there is forward pressure. We are projecting power outward from our base past the center line of the battlefield here. Oh, also, another thing, there was a summit where all the hermits decided to get together and turn this into a capture the flag game ra rising intonation questioning voice. 
No, I don't have a script. That's just me saying how I feel, because I, that's what we're doing now. But anyway, so they built this thing on the grave of my mausoleum while I was at work, and then they used terrible blocks for the backdrop of this thing. So I went through the hassle of replacing all the terrible blocks that were the backdrop for this with diorite. So at least that is better. I feel like I've been included in that way. But we still have more weaponization and aggravation that we need to deploy. Oh, good. One thing that they didn't realize was I'd actually built this as a, um, built this trench here as a place to hide from line of sight from the enemy there. And they didn't bother filling this in. They love filling everything I build in. They're just like, oh no, this offers some subtle advantage to the team that we are against. We should uh, take that advantage back away. I'm like, yes, technically you should, but I wish you wouldn't notice them as quickly as you do. But core concept, little trenches like that can give us an advantage as we encroach on their bases. Now, you might say, like, really? Is it that helpful to be in a trench? It, it can be, yeah. It can be really helpful to be in a trench. You see that guy up there? I don't. Well, there's probably not actually a guy up there right now. But if there was a guy up there, I would want to be able to drop into this trench and then, like, frantically go this way, right? And then the question is, like, well, how do you get out of the trench? Where do you get out of the trench? You get out of the trench anywhere you want to, man. Let me show you the magic of this trench. You just take some of these dirt blocks here, and we put little steps in, like, along the trench to allow you to get out. So if you want to, you can pop out over here, you'd zip back down, then you'd run this way, pop out over here, boom. They're, they're not looking for you exactly where you were. I will say, one of the bits that False was not so aggressive about removing was my weaponized astrology, rapidly deployed. So, if there are any Libras out there, don't lose your head when an old friend shows up. Drones. Also, the drones are always watching us. Always watching. So we'll need to do something about them eventually. But yeah, here's another one. Gemini, your twin has an arrow with your name on it. I know Asuma in particular was deeply affected by the signage during the previous battle because he uh, noticed that it was very dangerous. Oh, I like that they left my emergency exit button. I just put a bunch of TNT under there. That was... It doesn't... Not every trap has to be complex. It just has to not go off when mobs are around. So, let's get back as far as the... Once we're kind of on our side of the battlefield, I feel like it's not too cheaty for us to go and hop a firework here to turn night back into day. Because in the interest of recording, it just doesn't show up as well on YouTube if I am in, you know, recording in the dark. Or attacked by all the monsters ever. Don't want to be attacked by all the monsters. The Joe Hill song! Do do do! Oh no, it's Joe, he's walking and whoa, a monster came and slayed him, it's not a good episode no mo. Oh no way, Joe Hill says, I will find a bed today, built by that Concorp fella cub fan, who is apparently AFK now. Man, I was worried that cub fan was going to be rapidly increasing his uh, netherrack count quicker. I might even be able to catch up with him later. Let's go ahead and zip back over to the battlefield. There we go. Gotta love that server lag when uh, Iskul and Cubcam are, uh, what do you call that, AFKN? You know, whatever. Now, this trench is arguably a lot better than my trench. Ooh, and it even has, like, lava defenses. This is a good trench, okay? I I'll give them that. But the biggest problem this trench has is it is not looking over a uh, height advantage. So, ideally, you want to dig your trenches on the forward side of the hills, so that way you can look down and shoot at enemies who are running up toward you. That would be better. So, anyway, that's its own thing. But, where was I? Lots of core concepts today. Ghosts of your fallen foes will manifest soon, Taurus. Anyway, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having fun with signs. Now, one comment I have received from Team Star in the community chat is, Hey, Joe Hills, 
I think we've had enough random things built in front of our base for now. So, if you guys, I, I really want to solicit comments today. I don't have time to do a big build today because my daughter's birthday's coming up, and I have to go shopping, so I've got kind of an abridged, focused YouTube recording session. I gotta, gotta just get out here and ask you guys for your advice. We are gonna be infiltrating and sneaking into the enemy base and whatnot, and they're gonna be trying to sneak into our base, capturing our flags. Now, unfortunately, there's no one else on my team right now to do a capture the flag run with me. Since there's only three flags inside of each base, um, we kind of talked among ourselves, at least on the G team, um, and decided we should probably go in, like, either pairs or triples, because, like, with six team members or so, you know, it's not fair if three people get all the vid video footage of, like, going in and stealing flags, so I have to wait until, like, Cleo's online or Green or somebody to really go in there to not steal their glory or their opportunities for glory. But, anyway, so if you think of anything, you know, once again... Team Star said, Joe, we've had enough random things built in front of our base for right now. If you can think of either very well-structured things that are not random, that would be great in front of their base, please let me know. Also, if you can think of any things that would be great on the side or behind their base, I would love comments on that as well. I have probably four or five shulker boxes of nether brick at this point, so I am not going to have a chance to actually deploy any of those plans today. But you know what? We need a pivot, you know? They've seen what Ward is. They've seen variations on Ward. Now we need to do something wild and different and deeply, deeply unnerving. If, if it's not deeply unsettling, it's not a good suggestion. Like, I don't want to just come in here and say, build a coliseum out of nether brick in their front yard. They're going to see that and go, not again, but something else. I want them to go, oh, I didn't know that could happen. Like, this is a prank war. Pranks are about surprise, and and also, I want, ideally, like, somebody suggested build a giant sword of Damocles over their base. That is an amazing suggestion. Think along those lines, but maybe not literally a sort of Damocles. Like, something something deeply interesting. And ideally, that could be made from a ton of nether brick, because I have so much nether brick. But, anyway, thank you guys all so much for watching this video today and helping me scheme, because it's scheme team time for the G team. Uh, keep an eye out for our upcoming incursions into their base once again. My American time zone is killing me here, because I want to breach those walls. I actually have a really interesting idea to get over their moat with a weaponized arboretum rapidly deployed. Um, but yeah, we will we will see how that goes. You know, I kind of want to... You know what? Do I have any saplings on me? No, I have no saplings and no bone meals. So we will not de demonstrate the weaponized arboretum rapidly deployed this episode. But keep an eye out for that one. That should be... A pretty interesting way to cross the moat. Alrighty. Well, until next time, y'all. This is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.